Oh, yes. Hello out there, all of my fellow Transformers fans. Today is the very first episode in hopefully a running series on rumors and reveals for the Transformers toy line. There's been a lot of news, a lot of hearsay going on, and I thought now is a good time to get this thing rolling. I, I've been planning it for a while and wanted to take a stab at it. So, here we go. So, the first thing that happened is there were a couple of different rumors circulating around about upcoming toys for the Transformers Siege line. Among those reveals were a few new deluxe class figures. Uh, specifically, there was a claim that there was going to be a Nightbird from the uh, Siege Chromia mold, and it was attached to the term Hasbro Pulse, so a lot of people are thinking it's going to be like a generation select toy, which would make sense, pretty obscure character. Next, they claim there's going to be a Cybertron Defense Hotshot toy, which we kind of saw coming because if you look at the box artwork for uh, Transformer Siege Hound, you can see that they actually use the wrong head on there. It's a head that matches almost perfectly to the Cybertron Defense Hotshot toy from all the way back in the Transformer Cybertron line, albeit, you know, green. So that's not too surprising. And I would say, you know, if that shows up, nobody will be overly shocked. Another one which a lot of people have kind of already speculated on is a Refractor 3-pack. And supposedly, we talked about this during my review of Refractor, it's going to be toy accurate uh, Refractor figures. Um, I'm assuming new heads and new paint jobs. I don't know if they're going to alter anything else about the toys. Hopefully at least new heads. And um, they'll supposedly come with those extra accessories that we saw on the Transformer Siege website when you use Refractor Special Unlock Code. I'm not sure how that's going to be distributed, if it does get distributed. Um, I had hoped it would be a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, but it seems like those have already all been revealed and none of them are tied to the Siege toy line, which is a shame. But, you know, hopefully the people that got what they were hoping for are happy. So we'll see what comes of that. Again, not set in stone, but seems like a very good possibility. There's also talk of a Decepticon Impactor toy, which will be different from the Impactor that's already listed in the main line. Supposedly it's going to be Impactor from a time when he was under the Decepticon banner and he will apparently have different colors, whatever that means. Some people are even speculating it might be like a zombie Impactor, which be kind of cool, neat little callback to the Marvel comics. There's also some word out there, and again, can't verify, that this Impactor might actually have a different head, different head sculpt, um, which will be more based on his IDW incarnation than the more Marvel comics inspired one that we're getting with the main toy. So that'll be interesting. Can't wait to see how that comes about. And then lastly, on the deluxe front, we actually have, of all things, the Power Dashers, which were really little mail-away Autobot toys from back in the day. Um, based on Diaclone molds, they were very simple and as such weren't released as part of the main line. There was more of a little bonus. And you had three different types of Power Dasher. You had a drill type, you had the, the F1 type, like an F1, like Formula 1 racer, and then you had a jet type. And apparently these are going to be redecoed or retooled from the existing weaponizer toys that we have from Siege. With uh, the idea being that the drill type will probably be a retool of Brunt. The Formula One type will be, I guess, COG, though I don't really think race car when I see COG. And then the jet type would be six gun, I would imagine, because he's only a flying one. So that's really out there, but really cool, because how many people ever thought they'd have a second chance at the Power Dashers? Um, not sure how this will be released. It's almost undoubtedly going to be some sort of a select release because of how obscure those characters are. But hey, I'm excited. I will definitely buy those if they come out. Moving on, there was talk of a MicroMaster 10 pack that will be released as well. And this isn't the first time we're hearing about that. There were some, uh, I think it was like store listings or something in a store database that did hint at a coming MicroMaster 10 pack. Supposedly, these are going to be molds that have already been released. They're just gonna be in different 
uh, decos than the standard releases. Whether that means there'll be new characters or just, you know, like Fire Blast Whisper or something, we'll have to see. Personally, I hope it's the former. I'd rather them get new identities than just be recolors of the same characters, but time will tell. And then the last item on this big chunk of rumors was a, uh, a new Shockwave toy. It was supposedly going to be a redeco of the existing Siege Shockwave done in the uh, dark gray or black color scheme of what was called Galactic Man, which was the one of the original uses of the G1 Shockwave toy before it was the design was bought by Hasbro and became Shockwave. Uh, goes by some other names in different parts of the world. In Europe, I think it was called Astro Gun, Astro Man. I know I'm messing that up. But when he was sold by Radio Shack here in the States, he was called Galactic Man. So this new toy is supposedly Galactic Man Shockwave. And we'll go back to him in a moment. And then as a little add-on to that current block of rumors, there was another rumor going around. Again, not sure of the source of this that we were going to be getting a Rainmakers 3-pack. And for anyone not in the know, the Rainmakers is a collective name of three Seekers that were shown as minor characters in the original Generation 1 cartoon. And one of them is pretty well known. It's Acid Storm, the green one. And he's had a few toys over the years. And then the other two are called Ion Storm and Nova Storm. But, you know, this was a rumor that I didn't hear as much word on. It was just kind of floated out there. Well, now let's get to the reveals. The first thing, those Rainmakers, turns out, seem to be a thing. Uh, there was an eBay auction that went up, listing, for the Rainmakers 3-pack. Somebody had managed to get a hold of one from somewhere. They claimed they got it from like a Target owner or something, uh, which lends speculation toward this being another Target exclusive, which would line up with the fact that Red Wing, while he was available, was only available through Target's website. And, you know, it's just a big box, has all three Voyager class toys in there. They're all uh, read echoes of Starscream in very monochrome uh, color schemes. They're just bright green, blue, and yellow, aside from like their heads and then a small little bit of like striping and detailing. Um, no word yet on how and when these are supposed to be officially released, how much they're gonna cost, hopefully not too much. I mean, you're probably already looking at at least $90 for three Voyagers. So if you're into obscure characters and you like the Seekers, this is gonna be good for you. And next up on the reveals, tying back into the early rumors, Hasbro revealed Galactic Man Shockwave. So as crazy and obscure of a reference as that is, they're actually making him. That turned out to be true, which got a lot of people excited because that seems to lend credence to the other uh, rumored figures from that big leak. So, you know, if that's real, odds are the other ones are real too. But again, time will tell. Hopefully we'll find out something this week at a Comic-Con. And then surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, alongside this new Shockwave toy, uh, they revealed Lancer, finally. So the missing member of Alito One's uh, female Autobot team. And, uh, you know, she looks pretty true to the cartoon. She does share the same Moonracer body type, specifically the tooling used for Greenlight, who just came out pretty recently. Uh, her colors are very saturated and kind of an eyesore, but are more or less what they were in the cartoon. As far as accessories, she comes with Nova Star's cannon, and then of course the Prime Armor. So no new weapons, no Battle Masters or anything this time around. Her and the new Shockwave are going to be released as Generation Selects toys. So I imagine they'll be available through Pulse at some point in the near future. So yeah, a lot going on there. A lot of really out there releases coming our way, or supposedly coming our way. Some confirmed, some not yet. Hopefully some soon. And now for the end of this little segment that I'm doing, I'm going to give you the biggest reveal. Though, so you've probably already heard, but for those of you who haven't, uh, Hasbro has just unveiled a new massive Unicron toy. And this is being made through their HasLab project, which is a special program that they have going on to, in their words, create dream toys. 
uh, toys that people have wanted, you know, from their childhood, from their favorite franchises that just aren't really practical to release at retail or in any normal capacity due to the cost or the size. And they've, you know, already completed one that I'm aware of, and that was a uh, Jabba the Hutt sail barge from the Star Wars series. So if you're a big Star Wars fan, you know, you probably already know about that. Uh, they're also currently doing a giant cookie monster for some reason, because I guess a lot of people really want a cookie monster. I guess that's your thing. But now this third project here is Unicron, and this thing is set to be massive. The website is claiming that it is 27 inches tall, so it will be the tallest Transformer ever made, beating out Fortress Maximus by about two inches. And they also say that this thing is going to weigh 19 pounds. So it'll be by far the heaviest. So when you consider the dimensions, you know, it's a few inches taller than the Titans, but significantly wider and heavier, much more solid. And the pictures for this thing are just amazing. I mean, it's very impressive what they've done with this. Now it's not so amazing, and this is causing a lot of discontent within the fan base is the asking price. They are pricing it at $575 US and uh, they need 8,000 backers by August 31st for this to go into production. If they don't get that, then this won't be made apparently. So that's a tall order. They want 8,000 people to drop almost $600 on this toy. And I gotta tell you, as much as I love this thing, that, that's asking a lot, especially in that time frame. I mean, they're not giving people a whole lot of time to save up for it. But if you are somebody who has the funding and they can do this and you wanna see this toy get made, you know, feel free to go ahead and pledge your support behind it. They put a credit card on file when August 31st comes. If it's reached 8,000, you get charged then for it. If not, then nothing happens, it just goes away. So, you know, whether or not you think it's worth the price, there's no denying that this is very cool. Uh, the level of just moving parts, articulation, the surface detail on this thing are just incredible. And it is, you know, what you would think of as a dream toy for Transformers collectors, something that you would never expect to be made any other way. So it's, it's exciting times to be a Transformers fan, you know, with Siege bringing us all sorts of great stuff. Studio series going strong for those of you that are really into the um, movie series. Though, for some reason, they're in a really big gap in their releases right now. Some of my reviews have been for Siege and those studio series. So, the main lines are treating us really well. Plus, if you're a high end collector, you still have the Masterpiece series, though prices on those are getting a little ridiculous too. And then we also have a bevy of, you know, Generation Selects and exclusive toys to round out, you know, some of the more obscure characters and figures, which is just awesome. We have so much to choose from, more so than ever. And then, you know, Cyberverse is a thing still. You're five. But yeah, uh, that really wraps up everything that I had to put out today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this first crack at doing some sort of like a news rumor segment. Like I said, I've been wanting to do it for a while, so if this does well, people like it, I'll be more than happy to do more of them. I'd love to know what you're all thinking about these reveals, these rumors. Feel free to leave comments down below. I always read them and pretty much always reply. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you're liking these things. If you want to see more of my Transformers related stuff, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you always get updated when I post something new. And with all that said, I will see you next time.